I'm in the middle uh, neck roll volume off a bit. 10. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Um, what's still on? Something's still on. Welcome to That Pedal Show Meets the Tone Lounge. Welcome indeed. How exciting. <laughs> uh, so this is going out on Guitarist Magazine's channel. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to turn that full tone tape back off I'll, a minute. Okay. You know Neville because you're watching this on Guitarist. I need to get that into my head. Mm. For those of you on Guitarist that don't know me, Nev was my first boss in my first proper job. <laughs> So I've got two things to say, Nev. One is, uh, in we have known each other 25 years. I worked out yep. on my morning work, walk this morning. So when I walked in there, semi-fresh-faced into Guitarist magazine. I was there to greet you. <laughs> in 1997, yeah. it was a bit of a weird, uh, you know, all these people that you'd known for all this time. And, and there they are, all sat there doing this thing that you've been reading. So first of all, I want to say thank you because A, I wouldn't be doing this if, if it wasn't for you. Everything I know about guitars is largely down Shut to you. Up. And secondly, welcome. Thank you very much. It, well, for, it, thank you very much for that lovely intro. I mean, I would also say back that when you get somebody who comes in who clearly understands what is going on, what the big picture is, you clearly could play brilliantly. You, could play, you clearly knew lots about stuff. And you could write well. So there wasn't much not to like about you as a, <laughs> as a new, young, fresh-faced boy. Thank you. Well, Nev saved me because they, they were going to, they, they wanted to move us around and move us onto other magazines. That is the subject of another video. Absolutely. I, I think yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're here yeah. today. Um, so Nev called me and he said, look, I've got these new Murphy Lab Gibsons. How about I come over and, and we just talk about them and compare them? Um, well, it, it was interesting because um, you've been using my Tom Murphy aged gold top in the on the show for a long time now um, and basically the idea was let's see how the the new Murphy lab ones sound against a what my Murphy yeah. and we, we got this 59335 Murphy lab against your 58 VOS um, VOS yeah it's just a um, good discussion isn't it yeah so for those of you who don't know if you haven't read any of the um literature now maybe you could just give us a brief overview of what murphy labs is who tom murphy is yeah um tom murphy's been involved with the custom shop since the very beginning the custom shop launched as a custom shop with its own front door and its own premises in 93 tom murphy finished by hand the first 25 sunbursts and the first 15 gold tops yeah they weren't aged back then. That was something that he'd been doing, I think, on on the side for a long time. He's been working up these all these processes yep. of aging guitars convincingly, and especially with Gibson, because obviously other companies have been aging guitars as well. But to age Gibsons was a rather different thing to aging, you know, you know other other brands, which you know, which we all know. So Tom has been working on and off with Gibson, but but they decided that. The aging thing was such a vital part of guitar playing these days, and so many people like it. I know loads of people don't like it. Um, that they they started this division called Murphy Lab. Tom's in charge, 
Um, he's got a small team of people under his direction. And he was saying that they're learning new processes all the time. Yeah. It's such a influx kind of thing. So, I mean, we both like aged guitars, which is why we're kind of doing this yeah. in, in a way. Um, I think we should have that, before the end of the video, we should definitely have the discussion about the validity of aged guitars, because we, we know that they really do drive people crazy. Yeah. Um, but maybe we'll put that aside for a second and we'll do that. I was lucky enough um, a few years back to visit uh, Gibson Nashville and indeed Memphis. And in the Nashville custom shop, there's there was this sort of roped off area. Yeah. And everywhere else we were kind of allowed to walk around. Yeah. And in there, we they, they basically led us in and led us out again. And that was where Tom did work at Gibson because uh, yeah. I believe he used to do it away from Gibson yes, as well. He did, but, yeah. So I've seen some of this and the, the context for including my 335 is in the, in the, in the discussion of aging, Gibson, I don't know if they still do, but certainly for a long time did something called VOS. Mm, yeah. I was lucky enough to watch them doing it um, there in Memphis when they were doing yeah. it. The Memphis facility is no more. Um, mm. And it was a chemical treatment right. rather than a physical one. They, used, right. they had the stuff on a rag and they, drag it across and similarly with the hardware and stuff mm. anyway i guess no doubt you can read more about that in the magazine and uh we'll probably touch on it as we go but that's why this guitar yeah in. yeah shall we talk about 335s then yeah um well we know when they came out 58 which is what yours is. i mean you've got the long guard long pit guard on that you've got no by knee on the neck yeah which is the first few i don't know how many but probably very few isn't it yeah. most most of them have got binding yeah but, yeah and i've always wondered i don't know for a fact but i've often wondered whether the long pit guard came from 175 okay. they hadn't made any yet so they thought let's just stick let's that on yeah, there. stick it in and just cut the pick up further in yeah but on my cherry 335 which we've got is somewhere, around somewhere yeah you might you can see it the, the the pit guard ends pretty much where the back pickup is whereas these go past the bridge oh so it does all the yeah. way past the bridge and then there yeah okay <laughs> so so those are things i mean 335s have developed i mean the early ones had the, the dot dot necks then in i think 62 they brought in the block ones and they've been upgraded and they had a time when the nut, nuts were narrow and they've made them back to the full width now yeah solid center section of course which gives it that really interesting mix of solid and semi-acoustic sound doesn't it yeah i mean I, i've always said that they sound the way they're made like a bit scoop compared to a Les Paul, a three three five sounds scooped out. Yeah, well, maybe because we it actually can, is. We yeah. could get into a bit of that as we yeah. as we go. I have heard it said that it was the the design that Ted McCarthy was most proud of. Yeah, uh, albeit as about third hand. So I don't know what we want to say about that. Well, but. if you designed these things, you'd be proud, wouldn't yeah, you? Be proud. What a thing. So that th this is the the new Murphy Lab guitar. Yep. It's a fifty nine. It's black. That kind of surprised me. And me, um, I didn't even know they made any in the factory. Um, I presume they must have done. Bonamassa owns them all, that's why. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> probably. But, you know, I think Keith Richards used a black one. Yeah. And obviously B.B. King used a black 355. Yes. And you see black 345s. Yeah. Um, and this one is um, ultra light aged. And that there's very little on it that's aged at all, in fact. The only thing they've really done is crack the finish. There's no other dings. I mean, if I'd come in, if I'd just done a gig in the mid middle of winter and I brought my guitar home in its case and mistakenly opened the case in my boiling hot living room. That's what it would look and like. And then it did that. I'd be really pissed <laughs> off. I think I've ruined my guitar. <laughs> but that said, your first dent, yeah. you'd say you've ruined it. So, so you can't, and, and how, who are we? I mean, the first crack is the deepest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean, I've seen a lot of vintage guitars, but I haven't seen anywhere as many as Tom Murphy's seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who am I? We take his word for it. Yeah, exactly. It, so yeah. there's a little bit of tarnish on the hardware, isn't there? A little bit. And the binding's gone off nice and yellowy. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, it it, it does look a really cool guitar and it's got a very dark rosewood fingerboard, which yeah. had it been that gingery type, yours is too, yeah. Mm. Um, it wouldn't look good against the black, but that it does a really cool looking guitar, actually. Yeah, it is. Let's hear them then. So okay. um, pickups wise, um, they are custom buckers. Yeah. And interestingly, they've stopped potting them. Right. Now, that's a topic for discussion as well. Yeah. Because, again, in my experience, and I know you've said the same, unpotted pickups sound more open. Yeah. 
They definitely seem to, to me. It seems to be a part of that tonal recipe, doesn't yeah. it? If you want the most open sounding PEF style pickup, either less potting or no potting exactly. is the way yeah. to go. If, it, if ever a, a Tim Mills from Bare Knuckle Pickups has made me several pairs over the years, and he always says, do you want them potted or unpotted? Unpotted. Yeah. So, you know, he, he says he there, is a, there is a difference. I, don't, I mean, these are MHS, M Memphis Historical Spec, um, right. which were the, you know, Gibson regularly comes out with its most PAF type pickup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and this yeah. was the ones that were yeah. from Memphis to me. And it, we'll hear them. We, we will yeah. hear them. These are our Nico 3 as well. Are they? Yeah. I don't know what these are. No, no doubt the um, detailed obsessives among you will be yeah. able to look that up. So I won't have any effects or anything on. We'll just hear them straight into the amps. Okay. We've got a Victory V140, the Super Duchess, and a Marshall 50 Watt Plexi, um, both of which are just kind of on the edge, I would say. So. Um, Go for it, okay? <laughs> Both pickups on, all everything full up, volumes and tones. Neck pick up. We're going to say the same thing. Yeah. They're, they're totally different. Yeah. And of course, let it be said, we have to add the player variable into this. So absolutely, Nev's using a slightly thinner pick, yeah. probably slightly different tonality to mine. His yeah. attack to the guitar is different. So <clears throat> yeah. taking all those things into account, we'll swap the guitars in a minute, mm. but um, maybe play the same thing on both. But what are you hearing? Well, <clears throat> your bridge pick, your, your neck pickup sounds almost like a bridge pickup to me that had right. a real twang to it. Yeah. Whereas this is much more mellow. Could have been you were picking back near the bridge. Yeah, I was you, all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. do that. Yeah. Do that so that, that, I mean, the thing is, that's a great three three five. Mm. This is a great three three five, and they're not going to sound identical because so, they never do. Um, give us some twiddly then. I'll stick a bit of love on. Okay. Um, just a bit of, uh, I don't know. Let's go with a bit of sort of medium overdrive from okay. the Thorpey Warthog. Um, and for those of you who are all like, hey man, I don't want to hear any <clears> pedals. <throat> uh, I just want to hear the guitar. Mm -hmm. This is that pedal show meets the tone lounge. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and let's face it, rock and roll guitar is distorted. Sorry. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> um, so give us a bit of uh, twiddly with that then. Thank 
I hear this a bit honkier in the mid-range? Uh, well, I some I'm, I do wonder because I'm hearing things from a slightly different angle yeah, play, <coughs> to you. Play me something simple and okay. I'll see if I can replicate it. What pickup were you on there? I was on the same one as you, the bridge pickup. Okay. Good that we know the same lick. <laughs> <laughs> Along with all of our heroes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> maybe try something on the neck pickup. Okay. And then I'll ha I will grab mm. that guitar from you and okay. hand you this one. really weird because I, it's definitely my pick attacks totally different to yours yeah you're much harder yeah than I am and so I think my, by definition my tone is going to be softer than yours most of the time that guitar though definitely doesn't have feels to me from where I'm sat doesn't have the kind of high end and um <sighs> yeah the sort of I wouldn't say want to say aggression but that sort of speaking voice in the higher register yeah yeah i mean this one's got a massive neck yeah we used was that an issue when you played oh, well it? it was totally different yeah uh, it wasn't an issue but um obviously that amount of mahogany compared to that amount of mahogany that's got a classic 59 yeah style neck yeah, it's, it's um well it's exactly for, for ages there in the early days of the gibson custom shop if you've got a 59 guitar it would have a flipping baseball bat on yeah, it yeah and they're not like that are they no, and this not. is just magic. Yeah, it's it is. just magic. Yeah, it is. Gibson really have got their necks sorted out now. In fact, we're going to look at some Les Pauls in a minute or in in a while. They're more or less the same. Yeah. There's very 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 little difference from uh, in, in feel at all. They've both got um, quite. They haven't got much shoulder. Yeah. On here, whereas yours has got quite a lot of shoulder. Yeah, yours yeah. is more like a U. I think that's where the perception of a huge neck can come sometimes, can't it? Because maybe it's not that much deeper from. Yeah from you know, yeah. the middle of the first fret to the back of the neck, but you add in that shoulder, or at yeah. least you, you don't take it away. Yeah. And um, it can start to feel super clubby. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, can. it definitely is bigger, that one. But. It is, I mean, but I've got two Telecasters, and one's got a neck like this, yeah. and the other's got a neck more like that, in terms yeah. of general shape. Yeah. And I love both. Yeah. And I can play both. Yeah. And we're, 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 you know, we're arbitrarily comparing two guitars. Who's yeah, to yeah. say the next one of these won't be somewhat different as well? But I, no. I think that's what's interesting about the discussion, isn't it? Because it's all in the shade. Well, to, we were talking on the phone the other day about this, and we were saying how when you're spending this kind of money on a guitar, and um, that is 5,000, just over 5,000 pounds. So it's not a cheap guitar by any stretch of the imagination. You want to play that guitar and you want to go to your dealer who sells those guitars and say, can I either bring my amp in yeah. and my favourite pedal or have you got a deluxe reverb or whatever it might be yeah. in your shop that I can play it through quietly on my own for half an hour? Because that's when you get to know it. I mean, for instance, my Red 335, after my mum died about seven years ago, she'd always loved my Cherry Red 335. So I bought that oh. sort of in her honour. 
And, uh, and I was looking around for ages to find one that yeah. I liked. It could have been the, the colour, the grain, the sound, the weight. And in the end, I, I must have tried I don't know, a dozen in various Gibson dealers throughout the, the country. And I happened to be in World Guitars and they had three. They'd just come in. Oh, no way. Yeah. And I played all three and that one was the one. Was the one, yeah. And, and I wouldn't have known that had I not played it. I, I think that's a really good excuse to um, get it out, so to speak. Okay. Um, if we swap again. Okay. Um, I know the sound of this guitar really well. Maybe we'll hear it again. Maybe yeah. we won't. It's a pleasure to see this guitar again. This reminds me, uh, early in our friendship, Neville loaned me his 67 335, yeah. which was a Blox uh, with yeah. the pointy ears. Yeah. Just, this is not a 335 history lesson, but you will notice that the guitars are shaped somewhat differently. Yeah. Why did they change the shape of the ears? Do we know? I honestly don't know. I mean, it could have been a tooling thing. It could have been they thought, give people a bit more space up there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but it kind of happened at a certain point. 63? Yeah, 62. that kind of era. If you look at Clapton's win one, which I think was a 63 or 64. Yeah. It's more like that. Yeah. <clears throat> in, a, in a way, that's more elegant. Yeah. A lot of people like that, and a lot of people like the old Mickey Mouse ear. Yeah, they, they call the, this Mickey Mouse, yeah, don't they? Because yeah. it's bigger. Yeah. I, do you know, I wonder, given that all that furore that happened after the mm -hmm. Les Paul morphing into the SG whether they were looking at guitars like that going, wow, old men play these guitars. What we need is a guitar yeah. that's a bit more pointy mm -hmm. yeah. because, yeah. I don't know, it's pure conjecture, but um, it's probably like Nev said, the tools wore out, so they just got pointier. <laughs> but um, yeah, they got pointier. But this, but that, yeah. oh man. It's a nice guitar. And again, I chose it because the grain was right on it. The color was right on it. Is this a Memphis one? I think it must be. Yeah, I think it, um, it must be. We, we'll, we, we will confirm that. But the only um, thing I've changed on that is... Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, ah, yeah. The only thing I've changed on that is Tim Mill sent me some humbucker covers. Yeah. Because they had totally the wrong shape at the time when Gibson weren't making the covers right. So the they're right Tim shape, Mills. Yeah. But they are the MHS pickups, yeah. are they, as far yeah. as we're aware? Yeah. The other difference <clears throat> with this guitar is it's got nylon saddles, which is... I kept that because I, I like the softer sound. If yeah. you think of Clapton, um, the live cream stuff... Yeah. It was a softer sound. There was never any harsh edge to it. And I think his had the nylon ones. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, I'm not a historian. But... Let's have a listen then. That's to Honk. me is a totally different sound to either of these. Give it give it some shwang on that one. <laughs> Is that sounding more Les Pauly to, to you? It sounds lighter in the mids to me. Sounds, or oh, okay. at least the, the mid range focus is different. Like that's thicker. Yeah. Got more of it, maybe. Let's, um, what might be interesting, if we put pile on a bit of gain, come forward a decade or two. Okay. Um, and, uh, and just see for that. I don't even want to say the names, but we know the kind of players yeah. we're talking about. People who play better than we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't narrow it down very much, <laughs> no, that's mate, true. to be honest. <laughs> that is true. The other dip, big, um, significant difference with how they made them, um, the 63's got an extra mm. route out of the centre block. Right. Do you know yeah. why that is? No, I don't. I don't. So on the 58 and 59's, it's solid. And yeah. on the 63, in between the pickups, I think yeah. it is, yeah. there's a bit taken out. I don't know why that no, is. No, my, my 67 had the bit taken out Did in it? the middle as well, yeah. Because yeah. no doubt mm. you've repaired a few of these in your time. I have repaired many. I've taken necks out of, with with a hairdryer, yeah. heated the necks out, and <clears throat> I've done loads, yeah. They're the most 
difficult things to <laughs> take the, the insides out and change pickups and <laughs> change pickup because you have you you know to get this stuff out you have to take them out through the pickup holes which is a which is all right getting them back in is is terrible we used to have a little f tool that you went in and that put, put them in all at once so that you could actually have this tool that shaped the same as that parallelogram oh, okay. of things and you push it through and like a little bunch of yeah. bent wire or something. Yeah, it was probably a coat, probably a coat hanger. Yeah, yeah. Knowing us, yeah. Henry yeah. wasn't in charge then, was he? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. But again, that's got that's got the block inlays, which was was a later thing, yeah. and that was the evolution of the guitar. And a lot of people, for a lot of people, that that's is it. the ultimate three three five. Yeah, yeah. Because it's the Clapton three three five. Cherry red with the blocks, not yeah. to be confused with the three forty five, which had the. Uh, dual parallelograms and the 355, yeah. which also had blocks, but bigger ones, right? And ebony fingerboard. The yeah. 355 was essentially the Les Paul Custom yeah. version of the of the 300 series. Yeah, and if yeah. you make that into the 355 and take the F-holes out, there's your Lucille. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or your modern yeah. Lucille, Absolutely. anyway. Yeah. I'm going to pile some gain on there. <coughs> okay. I'm going to work up a sound here. I'm um, going to okay. turn on the HRM by um, J-Rocket, which is uh, a Dumbly inspired thing, inspired by a specific Dumble. Um, and maybe put on some naughty things as well, mm. uh, just to get us in that in that place. You're talking about another three three five player, aren't I you? I am. Yeah, You've I had a sunburst. One. I can't yeah. play like him, but um, and yeah. his mate, and his mate, yeah, who's yeah. sometimes uses Epiphone. Him version. Those guys. Yeah, those but guys. Yeah, bit little bit more gain. Um, yeah. we'll see. We'll see if we can get this happening. <laughs> I'm going to do a terrible thing there. There may be some chorus. Oh, I've really got into chorus recently. But it's it's a dual delay, but one of the delays is so short it's a chorus. Okay. That's lovely. Want to swang yeah. on that in G? Okay. In G. much further <laughs> we might get sued straight into very serious we strayed away from uh, your uh, kind of robins and your larry's there into, yeah, yeah. back into clapton yeah indeed who never would have had that much chorus and delay on but no. it's nice to hear it wet isn't it it's lovely to hear it. yeah it's here but it, it, i mean I, this is pathetic really but it shows how versatile these guitars are because yeah. one thing you can't forget with the 335 in the 60s, the 335 and the Epiphone Casino powered the pop music of the day. Yeah. It was, you know, the Beatles and the Epiphones, um, uh, Keith Richards were using a 335 and a Casino in the Stones, all of the pop bands. Yeah. All of the, um, all the Hippie Hippie Shake, um, but those bands, they all played 335s, all played. Three. Tony Hicks and the Hollies played 345. Yeah, yeah. Super, uh, super <clears throat> versatile, isn't it? Uh, it's super versatile, yeah. I think before we move on to the Leicesters, yeah. let's take it back to some clean sounds. And I just want to hear that classic, what we might think of the classic blues sound. Not We, we haven't quite got it because we've got Victory and a Marshall. Yeah. We don't have yeah. a crank super reverb, but I just want to hear some of that, particularly a couple of... Um, positions I, I really love and you really love in fact you taught me 
was the, the, the middle position with the neck oh off yeah a little bit yeah so maybe if we go between um yeah. neck pickup and the middle position okay we'll, we'll take all that nasty gain off <clears throat> <laughs> more, 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 more. <laughs> nice. What key was that? G. That was quite Robin-y. Yes. Yeah. Well, I get his, one of his favourite players was BB, wasn't it? Is it indeed, yeah. Um, a... Could you just give us a bit of that mid position with the neck yep. rolled off again? This one okay. seems to go super honky. Those of you watching the video and listening to the audio will draw your own comparisons. It's kind of a little bit difficult sat here. Yeah, I, I mean, we got three really good three three fives here yeah. that all sound slightly different. Yeah, and to kind of say one is better it is impossible because what's one person's favourite is one person's least favourite. Yes, and <laughs> such is yeah. the, such is the problem you have of buying a guitar. I suppose yeah. the truth of, of that is you 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 get the guitar, you learn how it sounds, and then you live with it, and that will yeah. that will definitely reflect your choice of other gear to go with it. As it turned out though, I just turned all the pedals off. I thought just straight into the amp mm. sounded a bit better. Yeah. So um, that's what we did. Yeah. Yes, there is that funny that whole thing. And the other thing is everybody, every guitarist I know, you know, if I gave you a Telecaster, you'd try and make that Telecaster sound like you. Yeah. So you go to all the knobs yeah, and switches yeah, yeah. and you'd make it your Telecaster sound yeah. as I would, as everybody watching this would. Yeah, completely. It's, and, and then of course, all, and you're, you're ostensibly trying to do that. And then there's all the stuff you're not trying to do, which you just do naturally. Yeah. So it ends up sounding yeah. a bit like you anyway. Yeah, so right. it, might, it, it might just be that things like neck shape, are you how the guitar feels in your hands? Yeah. And let's say it, how much you love the look of it. Well, that's exactly that. Part of why I bought that was, yeah, was, yeah. was it, I was drawn to it for its looks before anything else. Yeah. And then the other things fell into place afterwards. Is there anything else you want to hear on that guitar or comparison before we move on to the Leicesters? No, not not really. I mean, we're not here to compare in that we're going to come to a conclusion about which we think is the best of the three. Well, it's mine, obviously, but... Anyway, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, <laughs> and so we're just basically to demonstrate how yeah. three good guitars of the similar ilk yeah. sound slightly different. I mean... They're clearly all three three fives. I think we'd all yeah. hearing them. You say, "Yeah, it's a, you can hear that, especially on that middle sound where yeah. you, you get that quack." There's a certain quack you get, isn't there, on the both pickups on? Yeah, um, that's very noticeable on a three three five because it's more scooped than it would be on a Les Paul. Okay, then let's. Why don't we start with um, Dan and I have made a long video on this on that pedal show channel, and I'm sure we've done it over the years, but. We'll pick up one Leicester to begin yeah. with, and we'll just do a quick comparison of a 335 and a, and a Les Paul. Okay. Clearly, depending on what guitar you choose, they're, they're going to be different, but yeah. it will just give us a ballpark of where we're stepping towards yeah. with the yeah. with the Leicesters. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I have a play on that one? No. <laughs>
What's the riff again? Boobs. You could play it right. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. No. This guitar seems to have quite a bit of bite. Yeah. It seems bigger. Yeah. I sort of was expecting that because you'd expect a bit more bottom end response, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um, let's do what we did before. Play something on that guitar and, I'll, and we'll swap and okay. play, play it on this one as well and see what you think. Okay. Okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's got quite a lot of bite, that guitar. It has, and yeah. If, if anything, I would say those pickups sound a bit more modern to me. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's simply because there's more high-end response, compared to mine anyway. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's the nature of them being less potted or unpotted, we're not yeah. entirely sure. Yeah. What, what's your, what did you feel under the fingers? I mean... When I played, when I played it, they, they felt like they sounded the same. Right. <laughs> there, there, there wasn't there, was, there wasn't you know sometimes you play i mean i started with that same bend on the, the 15th yeah. fret and you kind of expect it not to react it reacted in the same way that's yeah, what i yeah. that's what i mean it didn't all, all of a sudden do something or not do something that that had done yeah it, it was complying with what i was doing what i was doing i think it me. is fair to say we'll know we'll, we'll be interesting when we get the murphy lab out in a minute this yeah. is one of the most poised I don't want to say light because that sounds like a pejorative mm. analysis of it, mm. but it is one of the most poised Les Pauls I have ever played. Yeah, me too. Brightness. Um, yeah. It does have that mid-honky thing. I, I, I don't know whether it's just psychosomatics, but I did wonder if I was hearing a bit more honk in that guitar. A bit more yeah, mid-pinch honk. May, maybe, maybe. Let me try something. I'm going okay. to turn on the naughty tape delay a minute. Okay. Um... Sorry, th there's nothing inherently naughty about it. It's just, I think it's naughty to have a take delay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. If you'd blindfolded me or played me recordings of that yeah. and said that was a Les Paul, you I'd have believed you. Me too. And that's the three three five, I would have believed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what really to say about that. No, no, no. It's just it's an interesting comparison. Yeah. Isn't it? I think yeah. one thing's one of the things that we've reflected on many times over the years, oh. or at least one of the things you always used to say to me, and I think I took it on, was that. Actually, a lot of those vintage guitars with the lower output pickups 
less wax potting and yeah. all of that. Very open sounding. They often end up sounding pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, clearly you, you're unlikely to mistake a strap for a Les Paul, but mm. you know, plenty of recordings where Les Paul sound a bit like tellies and vice versa. You listen to lots of the Motown stuff. There's a weird presumption in your mind that it's a Telecaster. Yeah. As often as not, it was a, you think of my girl, down, yeah. down, 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 that one. That, that was three, four, five. Yeah. And often they played big, big, semi, big hollow, semi Gibson jazz guitars. Yeah. Um, I know Reggie Young used a big hollow jazz guitar sometimes, or a Strat or a Tele. Yeah. He was one of the most recorded guitarists of all time. He played the intro to um, Son of a Preacher Man and oh, wow. he did Suspicious yeah, yeah. Minds by Elvis and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, those things. So, so what you hear, as you say, those were stripped of it. They didn't have any delays or they just yeah. basically a probably a deluxe reverb yeah, yeah. With, a, with a valve mic in front of it. And that's, and that's what that. you get, you yeah, know. And then the engineer does the rest. Yeah, or you, you then, then they, they dub turn... the choral sitar over the top yeah, of exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, or they turn the, the, the tone control right back. Yeah, you yeah. don't know what they did on the day. Yeah. We should have, let's, um, I'll grab the Murphy Lab 59 then. Okay. And maybe we didn't really do it on the 335s. Maybe on that guitar, we can get into the tone controls in a bit yeah. and see where yeah. we are with cleanup and stuff. Yeah. Oh my golly gosh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just the best looking aged Liz Paul I've ever seen, I think. Well, this is, I mean, of the, of the sunburst type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously this is a, Aged by Tom Murphy, yeah, that's with a, his signature on it down here. Was it? There's a T and an M. The T is kind of shaped like a mushroom, yeah, and there's the M like that. So you really can't see it. You need to look look for it. Yeah, I just did just check it was there. But this, to use a colloquialism, is banging. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I same as you. Well, you've seen more fifty nines than I have, but I've been lucky enough to see quite a few yeah, in, my, yeah. in my time. Yeah, and um, that's more of them look like that. Yes, than the. The mega stripey thing that you see, and a lot of people like. Um, I find as soon as you see a mega stripey reissue, it looks more unreal because not many of them are actually like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, even though that's the one that the retailers all sell because yeah, that's what exactly, everyone wants. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it'd be interesting to see what the guys on the Les Paul forum and Mr. Bonamassa think of these. Yeah, no doubt there's been a lot of um, chat about them. That they know mm. far more about bursts than, than we do. So, yeah. um, be interested to hear what they think but to my relatively untrained yeah. eyes that is banging it really is it's the, <laughs> it's the absolute bee's knees we'll do some details of it so you yeah. can see it a bit closer yeah. okay um where should we go Nev? i think well we will run the gamut of gain but maybe we should just yeah start clear just hear what they open what they sound like yeah Is that everything up or the yeah mid position everything up okay <laughs> Hard to tell? Yeah. Yeah. Play us some <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sound brighter to me mm. 
Okay, before we get to the fun stuff then, all the gain and everything, I wonder if we could... Um, I'm going to add some delay and reverb, mm. maybe knock the volumes back a bit and see yep. what sort of clean... Yep. And, and see how much they can sparkle. The, the reason I'm asking this question, I use that guitar, that actual guitar for... Uh, Daniel from that pedal show also runs a company called The Gig Rig and when he released G3 I recorded the piece of music that goes underneath it and all the guitars on that piece of music are that guitar yeah. and you would never believe it but from the just sort of crystal clean yeah. brightness of it you wouldn't believe it so yeah. I'm going to add some delay and reverb okay. um, just so it sounds all lovely and spacey and massive um, so I don't know, maybe roll the volume back a little bit, Nev, and just yep. see what sort of clean okay. you can I'll find there. Let's bridge pick up. Both sounded very nice. Yeah, very nice. Chimier? I think so, Slightly yeah. Slightly chimier. I think chimier, yeah. I think that's true. Yeah, especially on when you get, take it back a bit, worry. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, not everyone thinks about a Les Paul immediately as a as a clean guitar. No, but the, particularly on the vintage style ones, the clean sounds can be utterly spectacular. Yeah, they can. I think that one's got a bit of chime over this one. I think possibly it has. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, it could be my lighter touch. I don't mean that in a you know. I don't pick as hard as Mick, um, so it could it could be that. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to sort of emulate yeah, what yeah. you've been doing, but. Um, We'll play the same thing on the same guitar in a second. Yeah. Okay, um, long video. Let's add some love and just see, because I'm wondering if the extra weight of this, it does feel like it's got a little bit more weight, yeah. will translate into that sort of mid-range. Yeah, I mean, you, you think of Slash, you think of that sound, that's a big, fat, lots yeah. of middly Les Paul sound. Well, they varied a lot, didn't they? So, sorry, quick tangent. You've played <clears throat> Bernie's Beast, yeah. 59, yeah. and you've also played the Greeny... Yeah, uh, Gary Moore, Kirk Hammett, Les Paul. Yeah, can you even remember the difference in those guitars? Uh, I, I played the other. I also played Gary's other fifty nine. Yeah, um, the the Beast Bernie's guitar is an absolute monster. Uh, yeah, it deserves it, its name, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's yeah. it's so loud, it's so huge. I remember we did a thing at, at Guitarist where we filmed a load of new Les Pauls fifty nines and stuff, and Bernie the Beast came out and it kind of knocked everything else into yeah. a cocked hat because it was just an awesome sound. But it still has the vintage tone to it. Yeah. It's not all this middle coming into it. It's yeah. not that kind of express train out of control sound that you often think of 
as a Les Paul. It's still got that definition and, and the refined top end that, that a nice Les Paul. You think of the Beano sounds. It's quite sharp sounding. Yeah. It, it wasn't big and fat and middly. It wasn't a rock with an AW in it. No, no, no. Sound. You know, it was... Yeah. As it, in rock. <laughs> rock. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> but you're right. The, the, yeah. Even the variants in them back then, it, it's all of which is to say that I have played 59s that are very light. Yeah. sounding you yeah. know yeah almost like tellies almost like a powerful telly yeah in some in some instances yeah. so saying mm. that they're thicker and thinner doesn't really mean anything other than if you get to play enough reissues you'll you'll decide which ones you yeah you gravitate towards yeah. perhaps I, um, I, when i tr tried this again i bought it from world guitars and i've been going in and i always used to say to them in fact i used to any shop i go in i say what's the best guitar in the shop <laughs> it's just like a initial quip I say and they always said the gold top and I said I don't want a gold top and I didn't try it for months and months and months it didn't sell because everybody wanted the flame tops and then one day I had some time and he said look try it try it and it just won me over there and then because it sounded so refined it's, it's certainly yeah it's won everyone over on that pedal show so yeah, um, yeah. play like Clapton in a million years. I've just made it loud, put a load of reverb on. Yeah. See what you think of this. Yeah, okay. Want to play it? You on bridge pickup then? Clearly, it's not exactly that sound. We haven't got a blues break. No, and, no, no. And, and Abbey Road or Decca Studios or wherever it was done. Yeah. But d were you noticing any great differences in the guitars there? Not a huge amount. Yeah. Did you? No, Try some. maybe try some neck pickup stuff yeah. and see what you, what you think. controlled they don't, the guitars don't run away with you do they um let's try that okay <laughs> what's <laughs>
loads of gain, but still, yeah. still very usable. I mean, you, the fundamental note was still in there. Yeah, it wasn't lost at all. I mean, I think that's again the subtlety of these guitars. The pickups aren't mega powerful. Yeah. Um, so I think they retain their inherent sound and the sound of the guitar. The more powerful the pickups, and all the people of my generation, as soon as Dimarzio came out with the Super Distortion, we all whacked them on our yeah, Les yeah, Pauls yeah, to yeah. try and make them drive the non-master volume amps harder because they needed that at the time. Because we couldn't, I couldn't play my Marshall Hundred on ten. It couldn't, impossible. So you just wanted to kind of whack that front end a bit harder, and then you learn that you know that that's you lose the subtlety if you're trying to yeah. be this thing all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's also. With this video is going way long, but <clears throat> the way I've always approached fenders is you have to hit them. Yeah. And when I take that approach to Gibsons, yeah, classic Gibsons anyway, it works less well yeah. for my particular yeah. style of playing. And sitting back on the Gibson a little bit, Bonamassa always says it, doesn't he? You know, yeah. he's rarely on ten. Yeah. He's on yeah. seven yeah. or eight, and that's yeah. where the where the dynamic of the guitar lives. That absolutely. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Not everything all the time. Yeah. Yeah, you, you learn. I mean, uh, you take you, you take a one pickup guitar. You soon learn to use the volume as a tone yeah. control, and the tone as a tone control, and the tone as a volume control. Because you find where things work, and what you have to really, really make the guitar work on a two pickup guitar or a three pickup mm. guitar. You've got all these sounds, and often you don't explore those sounds as deeply. Yeah, you, or that you know the, the controls. You don't explore the controls as much as perhaps you should. Yeah, well, back to the old turn it up to ten and snap yeah. it off analogy, Exa isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. To finish off, um, when you pick up a Les Paul, yeah, what do you play? I think any guitar I pick up, I play a chord of A. <laughs> Could we expand on that a bit? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what I want you to do is play something on both of these guitars and and tell me what your impressions are when you've when you've done that. Oh, if if I'm I mean, I tend to play what we've been playing, which is that stuff down at the bottom because you hear the resonance of the guitar. <laughs> mindless the, blues noodling the, the of middle-aged men. Mindless blues, <laughs> exactly, mindless blues noodling because it's all I can do. You know, I've got my three licks and check. I will play them. You know, <laughs> then sometimes them. I'll even play them right. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. Uh, tell, me, tell me, what kind of sound would you like? I want to dial up a sound for you and I want you to play both guitars. Um, I, I'm really, I mean, I haven't played a guitar loud for so long that I'm just in awe of the fact that we can play <laughs> at a kind of room volume. Room volume. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm very, very, I'm very enjoying it. Yeah, it's really good fun. So like, a, um, do, would you like more gain or less gain? Or well, let's try wetter? a little bit more gain. Okay. Because I do like to have, I, I play light, and if I if I play on a gainy sound, it still kind of sounds a bit clean. Yeah. Uh, lots of people have told me that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let's um, set up something that's... Yeah. Um, it's not, bon dynamic. not bonkers, but yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, dynamic retains the fundamental of the guitar. Okay, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, because you played quite a lot. So yeah, just yeah. keep keep going. Okay. Just keep keep switching through. Any initial thoughts? Uh, I'd forgotten which guitar I was playing, actually, <laughs> halfway through. I actually had to look. Um, they're so similar. I mean, it, it's almost pick, like slicing hairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to hear the audio back. From where I'm sat anyway, and it's not always yeah. clearly physical proximity, yeah. and it's pretty loud, that one seems to th have more throat. And by yeah. throat, I mean lower mid range, a bit more push. Yeah. I would say that one sounds more like you imagine yeah. a, a classic 59 mm. to sound. Yeah. This one is slightly lighter and it's yeah. got a bit more of that vocal. Yeah. So the, some yeah. of the mid range is a bit more vocal, a little bit more scooped out, maybe. I don't yeah. want to say it's not fair to say scooped out. It's more like a, there's like a honk in there, which is the opposite of scoop. But the, yeah. the the feeling is similar. Yeah, it's really hard to, to pull them apart. I mean, you know, you turn the volume down on this, does it react the same yeah. as that? I mean, this has got 500k parts, so is that. Yeah, they're both 50s wide, I would both imagine. Both 50s wide, yeah, they've got yeah. the oil and paper capacity, you know, caps yeah. and everything like and that. And did you say so, they are custom buckers as well? These are custom bucker Al Nico 3, I think, uh, unpotted. Yeah, and these are the iteration before that? I think they're custom buckers. Yeah. Whether they're potted or not, I don't know. Let's we find out. The micro microphone yeah, micro test. Yeah. Not a huge amount in it. I think it was louder through this one, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, slightly. Yeah, slightly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you can read. You can read into that what you will. Well, if you put either of these guitars in Joe Bonamassa's hands, yeah, yeah, they both sound absolutely incredible, and yeah. you'd say the guitars are amazing, but it's the the player who's amazing. Yeah, what I what I think where I am with it is that that's the best Les Paul I've ever heard in my life. That's not a real fifty nine, mm. and I say that flat out. It's mm. in, in terms of my own personal preferences, I'd very mm. happily play this one alongside yeah. it. Yeah. I wasn't exactly expecting that. Not because I expected it to be worse. There's no such thing. No. Just because that particular guitar, to me and my experience of Les Pauls, is so unusual. Yeah. So I, you know, desire for this thing's just gone through the roof, hasn't it? <laughs> That's, I totally agree. I mean, for me, this is the most musical Les Paul that isn't a real 50 59 I've ever played as well. Yeah. I had played that for quite a bit through an amp, so I was expecting it to sound pretty damn good because it yeah, did yeah. sound good in, in yeah. my house against my 335 and against my fenders as well you know because it's always good to get a volume kind of you know yeah yeah sure you know how much louder is a les paul than a strat etc yeah. uh, so i knew it was a great sounding les paul um and again it's that thing would you buy that over this because you like the look of it just enough to tip the balance yeah I don't know. I don't know. I think you'd be very happy, wouldn't you, with either guitar? You'd and be... Back to what we were saying earlier, um, the shape of the neck on this one is bob on. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it, to me anyway. Yeah. And again, in it my is. relatively limited experience. Yeah. yeah. Not too much shoulder. No. Um, not not difficult yeah. to deal with at all. No, I, I measured that in the three three the black three three five, and they were you know within microns of each other. Really? So I'm not sure about this. Is this seems. Similar to that. Yeah, I, I guess this one, uh, it's got a bit of wear off yeah. the back there as well. So yeah. it, it, again, it feels a bit more 
That, I mean, yeah. that's a, an opinion divider right there, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Because a lot totally. of people won't be able to yeah. cope with that. But. No. Okay. So, I, I, would say, I would say taking the lacquer off the neck is an unnecessary thing to do for me. I, I wouldn't want it myself. Um, I haven't seen many aged Gibsons that have had all the lacquer off. Yeah. Gary Moores did because I've, nobody's ever played more notes on a Les Paul than Gary Moore. <laughs> Gary Moore. So it's not, it's not surprising. But uh, I, I've never owned a Gibson, a vintage Gibson guitar that's had the, yeah. the lacquer worn off the neck. Yeah. And I've owned several, many, many. But this is the ultra heavy wear one, right? That is, yeah. 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 So that would yeah. explain that. And I would guess if you went for a less. I think for version. the moment they're starting out with, they've decided what range to do what levels of aging you can't get them all at all levels of aging they've yeah. chosen for you what what they'll give you and i think they'll work out which ones fly out the door which don't yeah and then they'll keep doing those and slowly retract the others and if they're any good at marketing they'll do some slightly controversial things which make the forums light up and everyone's talking yeah. about gibson's new murphy exactly. lab so that's exactly. how i would do it yeah <laughs> but you know the, the the long and short of it is they they are making a really good guitar. The interesting thing is the Murphy Lab doesn't make the guitar. The custom shop makes the guitar. The guitar arrives in the Murphy Lab fully made. Yeah. And then they do the the, the, the aging and distressing. Yeah. And they put it they put them together. Yeah. So the guitar is a custom shop. Yeah. 59 Les Paul. Which is exactly how Tom Murphy did it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah, he would he would finish them himself. Oh, would he? Often, yeah, he would. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, um, I think it's a really long video. We should, I just want to finish off with talking about the validity and, and the controversy surrounding a fake aged guitar. Where are you on it? I was lucky enough to own one of the first Fender Relics in this country. Um, when they first introduced them, I forget what the year was, it was a, the British Music Trade show. Yeah. And uh, I went on the stand and they had a Relic no caster. In fact, yeah. you remember it. I do. I, I love it. That. It was an I amazing guitar. And and I and I so wanted the guitar. I said, "Can you sell it to me off the stand?" And I badgered them so much over that weekend. On the Sunday, which was the second day, they sold it to me there and then. I had a gig that night, and I drove down with this guitar in the case. And when I arrived, all the band. It was a Marty Wilde gig, you know, British rock and roller, um, and everybody went bonkers over this guitar. <laughs> they thought it was an original les, uh, a Telecaster. Um, and from that time on, I've loved them. Yeah. I, I've loved them. I think that they overdo it horrendously now. Yeah. I think it's become ridiculous. And some of the things I never liked, you know, here's a Lake Placid over Sunburst. Yeah. And it's all worn away. Well, they did that because they cocked it up. Yeah. They put, they, they, you know, they put the Lake Placid on because they cocked the Sunburst up. Or somebody said there's a big, big mineral stain in that wood that yeah. we can't let go. So let's cover it up with Lake Placid Blue. Yeah. Or, or something. So and, and some of the, the amount of wearing is, is bonkers now. Um, and, but like I've said to you before, very often on a vintage guitar, you think that, you, that they'd never go like that. Then the very next day you see you an see actual one, one and yeah. it's exactly like that. So, you know, we, we this, these are comments on our, but we, we don't know. No, Nobody no, no. knows definitively. No, because you've never seen every one. But I love, I love, I know, I know you do too. I like to feel like I've got a great guitar on. Yeah. For me, I, the, the key benefit, the key argument against, right, which is what you read on forums day in, day out is, you know, mm. essentially, how dare you? You haven't put the work into that guitar. It's yeah. fake. Yeah. Therefore, you're a faker, which, yeah. you know, fine, we can we can take that argument. For me, I would flip that on its head and say I'm slightly scared of a brand new guitar mm. and being able to want to take it out and kick it and, and not be scared when you put it in the stand. Yeah. You know, that familiarity that the guitar brings when it's a bit bashed up. Yeah. Not least, you know, years of reviewing guitars. Yeah. You sort of shiver a bit, don't you, when you take a brand new, oh, yeah. perfectly finished Gibson yeah. out of the thing, because you know you're going to ding it. Yeah, I know well, I'm you always ding do. It. There's no doubt you will always ding that guitar. Yeah. And and so with the relics, you don't have to worry quite so much, <laughs> or the yeah. custom shop age guitars, whatever yeah. brand name yeah. you give them. And I, for me, that is the key uh, benefit of a fake aged guitar. Yeah. I agree with you. Once it looks like it's been in a flood, yeah, it's like. Yeah, I'm not really into that no. personally. Somebody no. might be. But, you know, how many times have we been around to friends' houses or, you know, had guitars in and you open the case and everyone sort of stands back and you go to pick it out of the case and everyone flinches a bit yeah. because everyone's scared of damaging yeah. it. 
Yeah. And that's, for me, that is a guitar that you're just not going to play. Yeah, well, you, so you get these other brands that make very expensive guitars. You don't ding those yeah. because those guitars are all about being perfect. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, people say, well, it's never been gigged. It's never been out of the house. And, well, it's not really a guitar then, is it? It's not no, a musical instrument. Piece of furniture at that point. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, you no, know, no. I, I no, applaud no. that. I've done it myself. I've lusted after something because it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. But no, I mean, you feel comfortable. I feel comfortable with a guitar like this around my neck. You know, it's, it, I don't know, even if, it, even if it's aging is fake, it, it doesn't matter. It just feels good. It feels like an old pair of shoes yeah. rather than an unbroken in pair of shoes. Yeah, shoes is an interesting analogy, isn't yeah. it? Because I don't want to wear someone else's shoes, but I'd happily play that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, um, well, on that pedal show's behalf, thank you. Thank you very much on um, Tone Lounge's uh, <laughs> part. It's weird. Never like been friends for 25 years, and here we are representing uh, two two different things, but yeah. uh, happily in the same room. This yeah. has been really interesting. It's great for me. Um, being out of the guitar magazine game, I don't really get to see stuff anymore, no. and I'm I'm a little bit behind in my in my awareness of stuff. So it's really it, it's been a treat to see them. Thank you for bringing them. Been my absolute pleasure. I mean, it's very interesting to sit and play them um, in anger, if you like, with somebody else and and pass opinions. I mean, there is no winners or losers in this. Every guitar we played today is a superb, fantastic guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. that we'd be delighted to own, and. Uh, um, there's not very much more you can say about it. You know, that's a brilliant guitar. This is a brilliant guitar. Yeah. Happy days. And thank you, Gibson, for making them both. And thank you, Tom Murphy, for aging them both. <laughs> well, Murphy Lab. Murphy Lab yeah. with no yeah. S, isn't it? Not Murphy yes. Labs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Guitarist Magazine's YouTube channel. Please that subscribe to that pedal show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on both channels soon. Definitely.